Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on DarkSec. Today we're going to be taking a look at the room, the find command on Try Hack Me, a uh, learn by doing approach to the find command. This is a little bit of an older room, however, this is one of my favorite rooms on the site just because the find command is so heavily utilized, especially within both the pen testing space and even just the general IT space to the point that this is really a good thing to know. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right into task one, start finding. When you know exactly what you're looking for, you don't need to search for it, you just have to find it. This tutorial will help you understand how to use the find command effectively in a CTF context. It's written in a way that you won't have to refer to the man page to complete it, although I recommend the man page for further learning. The syntax of the command can be broken down as such, find, where, and then what. So the, breaking this down a little bit further, find where we're looking, so this directory or the root directory or so on and so forth, and then what we're actually looking for. Firstly, you tell the system to find something. Secondly, you tell it where to look. And finally, you tell it what to look for. You don't need to specify when you're looking in your working directory. Also, you can use wildcards as well in both specifying both, the, both a directory and a name. Note, there's no VM to deploy in this room. You only need to enter the commands that would be used to find what the questions ask for. Uh, you can also uh, test the commands in your own terminal. If you have access to a Unix or Unix-like system, you can do this with the attack box pretty easily to check the output of find with different options. However, that's not necessary. This is a walkthrough and everything you need to solve in this room is in the task description. So this top part here. On your terminal, execute the following command, touch file-1, file-2. This command will create two files named file1 and file2 respectively in your current working directory. Now execute find file star. As you can see, the command outputs both of your files and that's saying that we are doing the find command in our current working directory and we're looking for anything named file with anything at the end. This time execute find star one and the only output from that is gonna be find dash or uh, file dash one rather. Uh, that's specifically because we're saying we're looking for one and anything that comes before it. We just want one at the end. These commands are useful when you want to specify only part of the name you're looking for. And uh, you can see already how this can be really useful, especially if you don't know where flags are in the system. This is very, very helpful. Read and follow the instructions. We'll go ahead and mark task one as complete. And looks like I got a streak. Let's go in and dive into task two, be more specific. Most of the time, you won't be looking for something in your working directory. The first argument of your find command should be the direct or should be the directory you want to search. The command will be or will search in that directory and in all its subdirectories. So note this is recursive by default. So if you want to search the whole file system, your command should begin with find and then just forward slash, just specifying the root directory. Two very useful flags are the dash type and the dash name flags. With dash type, you can use D to find or to only find directories and F to only find files. Very useful if you are looking for one specific thing and you'll get a lot of garbage back otherwise. The dash name flag is used to specify a name or pattern to look for. You can type the whole name or use wildcards to specify only part or parts of the name. If you use wildcards, you need to enclose your pattern in quotes, otherwise the command won't work as intended. It is useful to know that you can also use the dash iname flag same as dash name, but case insensitive. Again, super helpful options. Find all files whose name be ends with .xml. That's going to be find forward slash. And then we are going to do dash name and then star .xml, I believe. Here, let me go ahead. Uh, let's see. Oh, we want uh, specifically the type to be files. Let's see, dash type um, F. Let's see if that is it. There we go. All right. Next up, we have find all files in the home directory recursive whose name is user.txt. So we can do find home and then type files and then I name because we're doing case insensitive and then user.txt. That should be correct. There we go. Find all directories whose name contains the word exploits. Find, and then we want dash type, 
D. Specifying that we're just looking for directories and then name. Um, and this one is case sensitive. So we need dash name rather than I name. And then we put this in quote. And since it just contains exploits, we can do that with stars at the end. And there we go. Let's go ahead and move into task three. Know exactly what you're looking for. In some situations, specifying just the name of the file or of a file will not be enough. However, you can also specify the owner, the size, the permissions, and the time that a file was last accessed slash modified as well. The username of the owner of a file is specified with the, the uh, dash user flag. So you can see um, real quick, we're taking a look at all the pro uh, properties that we have of each file that uh, the Linux file system gives us. And we can essentially take any of those. And if we know a little bit of what we're looking for, we can start narrowing things down. The size of a file is specified with the dash size flag. When using numerical values, the formats dash n plus n and n can be used where n is a number. Minus n matches values lesser than n plus m matches values greater than n, and n matches values exactly the same as n. To specify a size, you also need a suffix. C is the suffix for bytes, k is for kilobits, and m is for megabits, or megabytes. There we go. Uh, so if you want to specify a size less than 30 bytes, the argument dash minus 30c should be used. The dash perm flag is also used to specify permissions either in octoform, so 644, or in symbolic form, u equals r. This flag may be very, very familiar to you if you have done privilege escalation wherein you are looking for uh, suid binaries. This is part of that command. See here for a short reference. If you specify the permission mode as shown above, so for example, the 644 or u equals r, then fine will only return files with those permissions exactly. And if that's something that's a little bit confusing to you, I do recommend checking out the Linux Fundamental series. There are three rooms in that series, and part of that series breaks down these permissions and what these numbers actually mean. You can use the dash or the uh, forward uh, slash prefix to make your search more inclusive. Using the dash prefix will return files with at least the permissions you specify. This means dash 444. Mode will match files that are readable by everyone, even if someone also has write and or execute permissions. Using the forward slash prefix will return files that match any of the permissions you have set. This means that dash uh, or forward slash 666 mode will match files that are readable and writable by at least one of the groups. So owner, group, or others. Think of that as or um, for this one when we're looking at actual Boolean operators. Lastly, time-related searches will be covered. These are more complex, but may prove useful, um, and I believe if you're doing the Linux challenges room, this is something that's really, really helpful to know because I think one of the challenges is based on this. I will have that linked in the video description as well in case you are looking to check that out after the fact. These are more complex, but may prove useful. The flag consists of a word and a prefix. The words are min and time, for time or minutes and days, respectively. The prefixes are A, M, and C, and are used to specify when a file was last accessed, modified, or had its status changed. So you can see A for accessed, M for modified, C for changed. As for the numerical values, the same rules of dash of the uh, dash size flag apply, except there is no suffix. So to put it all together, in order to specify a time that was accessed more than 30 minutes ago, the option minus a and then min plus 30. So anything that was accessed 30 plus minutes ago uh, is used. To specify that uh, it was modified less than seven days ago, the option minus m, so modified time for days, and then minus seven, less than seven days, is used. Note, when you want to specify that a file was modified within the last 24 hours, the option minus M time zero is used, so the current day. Find all files owned by the user kitty cat. That is going to be find forward slash dash type because we're looking for files dash F and then user for specifying our user. And then kitty cat is going to be the name. 
Find all files that are exactly, so note exactly there, 150 bytes in size. So we can do that with the find, hold on, there we go. Find forward slash dash type. Again, we're looking for files and then dash size 150 and then C is going to be bytes. Find all files in the forward slash home directory recursive with size less than two kilobytes and extension dot, uh, dot txt. So we want to do find slash home dash type F because again, we're still looking for files dash size minus two and then K for uh, kilobytes and then dash name and it's going to be star dot txt star and there we go. Find all files that are exactly readable and writable by the owner and readable by everyone else. Use the octal format. So for this, we are going to do find and then forward slash because we're looking for all files. We're looking for files, so we'll use type F and then dash perm because we're looking at permissions and then readable and writable. That's going to be a six and then readable by everyone else. So that includes everyone in our group and everyone else on the system. That's going to be four, four. And there we go. Find all files that are only readable by anyone. So we want to do find forward slash and then we'll do type F because again, we're still looking for files and then perm since we're looking at the file permissions explicitly and then forward slash because we want that or operator where we only need one of these to match. So let's go ahead and do 444 because that's read and there we go. Find all files with write permission for the group others, regardless of any other permissions with the extension .sh. Use uh, the symbolic format for this. So we're gonna do find forward slash because we're looking for all files again. <clears throat> uh, dash type again, files, and then perm, since we're looking at the permissions and we are looking for the group others equals, let's see, write permission. So others equals W and then the name is going to be star dot SH. There we go. Find all files in the USR bin directory recursive. And again, find is recursive by default that are owned by root and have at least the set UID permission uh, set. So use symbolic format on that. And again, this is going to look pretty similar to what we would do for finding SUID binaries in the first place. So find forward slash USR and then bin and then type F because we are looking for files and then we want dash user because we're looking for things that are owned by root and then dash perm. We want at least so that's going to be the minus because anything higher than that is also going to be included or anything else will also be included. The user permission is set to SUID so that's going to be S. Find all files <clears throat> that were not accessed in the last 10 days with extension .png. It's going to be find forward slash and then type file and then a time. So accessed time and let's see the last 10 days. The last 10 days and the name we want star .png. And there we go. Find all files in the USR bin directory recursive that have been modified within the last two hours. It's going to be find USR bin dash type F for files dash M for minutes because we're looking at hours and then that, that's going to be 120. There we go. Let's move into task four. Have you found it? <clears throat> to conclude this tutorial, there are two more things that you should know of. The first thing, or the first is that uh, the redirection operator, so we have the uh, greater than symbol with the find command. Uh, you can save the results of the search to a file, and more importantly, you can suppress the output of any possible errors to make the output more readable. This is really, really useful with uh, actually this next bit that's mentioned. This is done by appending the two uh, greater than or the uh, append symbol, or not append rather, um, the redirect symbol rather to dev null, otherwise known as the bit bucket to your command. This way you won't see any results you're not allowed to access. So it, this suppresses errors. It's really helpful, especially with the find command because 
you will get a lot of errors from this just by default. Um, I'm actually really surprised that this is something that's not included in the find and command by default and you can, you know, have it uh, disabled. I'm sure that's probably done so that you can actually see files. Even if you don't have permissions to them, you can see where they're at. The second thing is the dash exec command. You can use it in your find command to execute a new command following the dash exec flag. So, uh, so like so, dash exec, who am I? And then backslash and a semicolon. The possibilities enabled by this option are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but most notably, it can be used for pri er, privilege escalation. Um, for that one in particular, I believe that's if you find one specific, uh, whatever you're looking for, it'll execute that command, which is really useful. Um, that's actually an interesting thing that I believe is included in GTFO bins for find that, um, you, if you have, um, pseudo privileges with find, you can escalate to root in that way. You are now better equipped to find anything you're looking for in the file system. Go ahead and mark that as complete. And there we go. We're all done with the find command. As always, I will have the Discord uh, for TryHackMe linked in the video description along with the TryHackMe subreddit. Definitely recommend joining there if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I have my Discord linked in the video description too. Uh, if you enjoy this content, give me a uh, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and otherwise, I will see you guys next time.